Hey all, welcome back. This is module eight, monitoring and optimizing call flows. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So agenda, importance of monitoring and optimizing call flows, uh, Genesis Cloud Analytics and reporting, call flow performance metrics and optimization techniques. So what's the importance and why is it important to monitor and optimize call flows? Well, monitoring and optimizing call flows is crucial in the management of a contact center using Genesis Cloud. These processes ensure that your call flows remain effective, efficient, and relevant, which directly impacts the quality of customer experience and contact center operations. Efficient and effective call flow handling is essential for delivering a high quality customer experience and improving contact center performance. Now you'll notice, uh, especially with AI coming in, chat GPT, all of that's coming in, um, these are probably future things that are gonna be coming in Genesis Cloud. So that's why you can kind of see why optimizing is important as these things ai become more elevated and more complex building those within your genesis cloud experience not only helps you optimize and continue to optimize and monitor them it allows the customer to have an incredibly uh, diverse experience from one person to the next especially if you're you're using your crm to pull data into genesis cloud you're able to then really customize menus and options and experiences around them to where it's more efficient for them to get in there, do self-help, and not even have to essentially talk to anybody and still have a great, a great level of a great experience. So Genesis Cloud Analytics and Reporting. This is just the overview. Obviously, these are explanations. They go deep into it. I don't, I don't quite read through this a lot, but dashboards is one thing. Dashboards allows you to have real-time and historical data. You can build those dashboards according to your needs and your business needs. You may already have, as a company, already have dashboards tailored to that. You're then able to kind of quickly see the lay of the land, either historically or in real time, of queues, of call flows, of milestones, of different things that you guys need. Uh, reports, reports is another thing. Uh, they are doing away. You probably, if you are in Genesis Cloud, you'll see it. There's still a reports tab at the very top of Genesis Cloud. That is going to be deprecated. It's no longer used. You're actually going to go into um, the interactions, and you're able to then filter off of a variety of things. There's a ton of things that you can report off of. That's what you'll actually be using. You can build those reports. You can schedule them um, you know, weekly, daily, monthly, however you want. You can also keep it because it's a tab system there too. You can actually keep that that filter for as long as you want. You can rename it if you want. That just allows for a better experience. Uh, performance management, same thing. It's KP, obviously key performance indicators, KPIs, and comparing them against industry benchmarks. Uh, businesses really use those to identify for improvement and corrective action. So uh, you, your business probably already has those set. You just need to make sure that you kind of mimic that in Genesis Cloud uh, with how your you know how your business runs that. Uh, interaction analytics. This is really just uh, gives the capabilities of allowing business to analyze customer interactions across different channels, such as voice, chat, email, and social media. You leverage speech and text analytics. Uh, you can identify trends, patterns, potential issues. We do. There is a TTS or a text to not text to speech, but there's TTS obviously. But there is a um, translation where it translates the the voice into word, and you're able to see that. It also has like keywords that it looks for. You can set those keywords up yourself too. Uh, kind of goes around to the KPIs to help with that. Uh, quality management, this really enables businesses to monitor, evaluate, and coach their agents on an ongoing basis. So you'd be able to tap into your agents' um, calls and kind of listen in and make sure they're doing the correct job. Also, it has a lot of um, being able to just kind of make sure that the, the agents are adhering to those processes and guidelines that you've already set. Uh, workforce management, this gives you a good way to start accurately forecasting call volume, scheduling agents, monitoring real-time adherence. Uh, all these tools uh, ensure that you have the right number of agents during the right day. So obviously, first, you know, when you first get in there and you first start going through Genesis Cloud, there's not going to be a lot of data. But as the at day after day of starting to use this, uh, that workforce management of being able to have the right agents during the right part of the day or right days uh, will become much more efficient. Uh, next thing, predictive analytics. So Genesis Cloud leverages AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning to provide businesses with predictive analytic capabilities. These features can help businesses anticipate customer needs, optimize resource allocation, and improve customer center performance. Last but not least, data integration. This is where we're talking about your CRMs. Uh, they offer data integration capabilities that enable businesses to connect their contact center with other business applications, such, such as the customer relationship management systems, business intelligence tools, and third-party analytics platforms. 
This allows businesses such as you all to gain a comprehensive view of their customer interactions and make more informed decisions. So analytics reporting, getting logged into it. So I put this here just because it's a step-by-step -step, like a lot of other ones I do. I, I don't try to go through a lot of this because this is really, for me, the boring part. I like doing hands-on, um, but this is here so you guys can have a reference. Obviously log it in, go into the performance tab under performance, click on workspace. That's gonna bring up your dashboard. There is um, a search tool there. You can do Q, uh, you can type in Q performance, interactions, flow performance. These are just a few of the examples. There is a ton in there. Um, and obviously there's a bunch of metrics to go along with that. It, it really needs to be relied on your business to kind of set forth what you need to monitor for, what they want to see on a regular basis. And then obviously you may have some personal things that you want to look at to make sure that your call flows are performing correctly. Just kind of run through there. I know how I always did it is I just kind of, I, I winged it and then put things in back and forth to kind of see what I was liking the most uh, and then kind of build a few dashboards around that. So filtering and customizing the report or dashboard. There's a lot of filters, like I said earlier, that you could display in the report or dashboard, such as uh, specific criteria, date range, cues, agents, uh, milestones, uh, Annie, DNS, everything, call flows, if you want to filter it down to call flow. You can customize the report or dashboard, adding or removing metrics and visualizations as needed. So analyzing the data. Uh, this is the this is the human part of it. You're going to go ahead and analyze in that. It's going to provide you obviously all the data that you need that you've displayed. Then you're just going to need to analyze that and analyze for patterns and potential issues uh, to the related call call flow performance. May require further rest of investigation. Um, you know, such as if you have long handle times, high abandonment rates, or frequent transfers. Frequent transfers, excellent uh, idea there. That is that could be a problem. Maybe the caller isn't understanding that they need to press two for billing. Um, so they press, they keep pressing one thinking that the support team is going to help them with billing. And then all of a sudden now the support team needs to transfer them to billing. So maybe uh, what you need to do there is in, uh, you know, prior to the menu, put some prompt about, hey, our menu options have changed. Please listen before you select or for billing department, you know, maybe say that up front or change billing to option one and, and support to option two, something like that. Just working around, figuring out a better way. Uh, to handle their, you know, their things. Uh, export the report. You can always export it. It's CSV and PDF. Uh, obviously, Excel is not. It's, Excel is not an is not an option. It's CSV and PDF. Obviously, if you're you have Excel, CSV is going to open in that. Uh, you can also choose to not only export, send to multiple emails or an email distro. Um, setting up real time monitoring. That's uh, under performance and workspace as well. And then you'll just call, you'll, you'll select the desired call flow metrics and visualization, visualizations to get the custom dashboard. So here is the view of that. You can kind of see along the top right here, uh, performance is the very top. The next thing is there's all my, there's all my uh, tabs. You can do quite a few tabs. You can, um, you can name those uh, however you want to name them. When you go and highlight, the contact center here is the defaults here. You can do agent performance, you know, status, interactions. You can do a whole bunch of things. You'll see dashboards are down here, employee engagement flows. So you'd be able to search by that as well. Um, that's pretty much it for that. Uh, so call flow performance metrics. There's uh, there's four of them that are the most common. That's what uh, that's what I have a, a tendency to go for as well when people are looking for certain things um, for call rates. A call abandonment rate just measures the percentage of inbound calls that are abandoned by the caller before they're connected to an agent. So you have 10 calls that come in, six have been abandoned, disconnected, four made it to an agent. That is, that's not a good rate, but that, uh, that'll that give you an idea of what's happening and you'll be able to look into those interactions a little bit deeper onto what happened. Uh, average handle time measures the average duration of a single customer interaction, including both the time an agent spends talking to the customer and the time the spent on related tasks, whole time after call work, et cetera. This, uh, this is a good one to look at because maybe um, maybe they are taking quite a, quite a bit of time with the agent. The agent's on there for you know an awful lot of time, or maybe it's very quick where they're getting transferred. Goes back to the transfer thing. You're able to then dig into that interaction, see what's going on, see if you can, you can fix that out to make sure that the, the customer's having a good experience. Q wait time. This obviously does exactly what it says, measures the average duration caller spend waiting in a queue before being connected to an agent. This gives you a really good idea. If you know if wait time wait times are 15 minutes and your you know your KPI is 30 seconds or 60 seconds, 
maybe we need to add more agents or maybe we need to route them or offer a callback so they're not on hold, but the callback can be on hold for them. Uh, first contact resolution rate measures the percentage of customers inqu customer inquiries that are resolved during the first interaction with an agent. So that right there is really, uh, it's a percentage based off of the inquiry that they have that is resolved in the first interaction. So if they don't get it resolved with that agent and they transfer it to another agent, then they transfer it to another agent, that's going to be a problem. Um, using metrics to identify areas for improvement in a contact center involves collecting, analyzing, and interpreting data to make informed decisions about performance and customer experience. By focusing on key performance indicators and other re relevant metrics, you can pinpoint weaknesses and areas for optimization. So optimization techniques. Simplifying call flow logic. We've, uh, I think we've talked about that on almost every uh, every module so far, but that's uh, that just minimizes confusion, reduces the likelihood of errors, improves both agent and customer experiences. Not only that, but it helps the architect. It helps the the developer in there that's doing those changes. It allows better onboarding by um, by new new people coming in to help with a building call flows. They can easily view it, easily understand it without all the confusion. Reducing wait times with queue backs. We mentioned that queue callbacks. We mentioned that just the uh, last one. But yes, callbacks is a great way to reduce those times. It doesn't let them be on hold. That that call kind of stays in on hold for them. Once it gets answered uh, by an agent, they'll able to then call it back and it'll call that person back. So personalizing call experiences with data actions. We've talked about data actions quite a bit, but that's kind of with external systems, you know, CRMs or however you want. Like I use sales for, Salesforce for an example, um, that being able to reach out to Salesforce, grab all of the customer data that's in that Salesforce record and populating that, whether it's, hey, welcome back, John Smith. Um, using their name in that, in that call flow just provides a better personalized experience, um, helps them just kind of, keep continuing on and, and do that uh, and which leads right into self-service options if you're able to pull back all that information and use them by their name and, and really have all the information up front it enables self-service options to just run that much smoother um, it helps resolve their issues find information without the need for a live agent also create more efficient and effective support experience <clears throat> so just some examples and these are for optimization techniques this intelligent call routing it's just routing call, incoming calls to the most appropriate agent based on factors such as agent skill set, customer profile, language preference. You know, let's say you have, you know, English is your main language, but you want to offer Spanish. They come in, there's a menu that says for Spanish, press eight, obviously in Spanish. Um, they press eight and now there's a, you could, you could do a separate routing. Maybe you want to put them right into queue to be answered by a Spanish speaking agent or maybe you have a separate menu, or maybe you just wanna make sure that you set Spanish. Like just making sure those kind of routing features happen. Time-based routing, this could be for, you know, you're doing a schedule check and open is gonna to route to support. Um, maybe if they're closed, you guys have an offshore resource that, that handles that piece and you wanna route it to them. You can do an external transfer to their, uh, to their queue and their system um, that allows them to answer and, and do what they need to do. Uh, queue callbacks, excellent feature. Uh, voicemail is the same way, but queue callback actually holds your place in line. Uh, just gives them the, you know, they can hit press whatever option you want to have them select for callback. You get their number from them, confirm that that's the number you want called back. Um, they can, you know, go on with their day while they're, you know, while they're waiting for the callback. Personalized greetings, kind of what I said about, hey, welcome back, John Smith that kind of thing, being able to customize this to customers because that's the most important thing. You want to be able to personalize the greeting for them. They already don't want to call in. We know that. I mean, I'm there. I don't want to call in place. I'd rather chat with somebody. Um, but this allows them at least to have some kind of personalized experience so they know that you know who they are, um, simply put. Self-service options, this is the best. Uh, if you have to call in, God, you don't really want to talk to somebody unless you absolutely have to. Enabling callers to access their information, uh, complete simple transactions without speaking to an agent, that's going to be awesome because you can check, you know, check your balance, schedule appointments, track orders. Maybe you want to pay your bill. Um, perfect to have self-service options for that. Context aware routing. So this is just collecting information from the caller during the IVR process, such as their reason for calling, using it to route to the appropriate agent. So let's say we are going to do some kind of um, voice recognition and we're gonna tie, need to pay my bill. Gonna put that uh, put that in there and that's going to automatically route to billing. Um, them being able to do that, you could say, hey, please tell us what you're calling about. 
they would say it, they would recognize it, it would then route it to the agent. We could also populate that onto an agent script. So when it pops up, it reads they want you know what they said, uh, they want to pay their bill. Uh, and it gives them a heads up. We could already populate their information in there. So they're already, ma the agent's answering the phone with their, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Smith uh, and making that personalized experience even better. So overflow routing. You can set up call flows that route to uh, alternative destinations when a particular queue reaches its capacity or wait time threshold. This ensures callers are not left waiting. So, you know, you come in, you're going to do a check prior to like one of the examples we had earlier where it was the agents on queue. Let's say you go in and do the check for agents on queue. There are none. Where do you put the call? You could put it into a callback or a voicemail. You could have it route to maybe supports full for whatever reason. You're going to route it to sales temporarily just until you get somebody on queue. That's an excellent choice for that. Uh, Multi-channel support. So this is chat, email, social media calls. This is being able to route everything seamlessly into Genesis Cloud. Uh, without anyone else knowing it, um, you will you could have a caller or you could have an agent answering the phone, um, answering chats, and returning a voicemail or returning an email, all in the same queue without, uh, with, with seamless technology or seamless uh, customer experience. Escalation paths. So this just really allows customers to escalate their issues to a higher level of support if needed, such as a supervisor or specialist. This is really helps the, the agent get to, a, you know, escalate that quicker. And, and tells the customer that they're important and their needs are, are taken care of. One final thing, post call, post call surveys. Out of the box, this is a text message or an email. Obviously, if you have a CRM, you might be able to pull their, uh, their email if you're gonna decide to do that. Obviously, a third party is needed if you wanna do voice survey at the end, um, but that is, that is available. Ongoing monitoring optimization. Uh, regularly reviewing call flow performance is crucial for maintaining and improving the efficiency and effectiveness of your contact center operations. Making sure to continuously identify areas for improvement is essential, obviously, to maintain a high quality customer service and adapt to changing business needs. You know how the business is. One, you know, one week or one month they could be doing this, another week or a month they could be changing course and wanting to add these features or do this thing. This really helps you turn on a dime uh, and get things off and running. It just also does involve regular evaluating call flow performance, agent performance, and customer satisfaction to pinpoint opportunities for growth and enhancement. Uh, adapting call flows to changing businesses uh, needs is a crucial aspect of managing a successful contact center. By being flexible and responsive, you can maintain a high level of customer service, optimize resources, and stay competitive. So in conclusion, monitoring and optimizing call flows are essential for maintaining efficient contact center operations. It does allow you to also optimizing those call flows really allows you to stay, you know, stay in the know of everything coming up, um, making sure that they stay, it stays up to, up to date and current for your customer experience is really the most important thing. Uh, as you progress through this journey to master call flows in Architect, we strongly encourage you to make full use of Genesis Cloud's powerful analytics and reporting features for call flow monitoring. So I know there's going to be a hands-on exercise to do, uh, and then there's that uh, Q&A. I'll see you in Module 9 after that. Thanks. Bye, everybody.